All right, finally I'm ready. Let's look at le uh, lesson three five, and that is selecting procedures for derivatives. What would, what this does is kind of combines chapter two or unit two with unit three, all those techniques that we've been learning about derivatives and compiles them into one big one big pot. So you'll see on the next page, I've got a little review chart for you to go through. What procedures for finding derivatives have you learned so far this year? So from unit two, that's kind of where we were introduced to product rule, um, quotient rule, uh, power rule, all those good things. So let's just see if we can make a, a complete list. We started out by learning power rule, and that was essential kind of the essential building block to everything that we've done thereafter. Um, we also learned about derivatives of constants, that that ends up being zero. We had the constant multiples. The coefficients that sit in front, right? We learned how to deal with those. Um, sum and difference of functions and how to take their derivatives individually. So this would have been like um, f of x plus or minus uh, g of x. And we know that we can take their derivatives individually and add them up. Uh, from there, we would pick up, we, oh, we picked up all those trig derivatives. So the trig functions, the six trig functions. Um, exponential functions, e to the x, a to the x exponential functions and I've got log all oh, the logarithmic ones so I'm just gonna write logs and then product rule and quotient rule man we've learned a lot of stuff Those were essential building blocks, which took us into chapter or unit three that we're just still working on. We had the chain rule that really is an overarching concept of composite functions. It's how we make the really fancy functions. We have to be able to, to write them a, a little bit more um, strongly than what just the power rule can handle. Then we, oh, we had implicit differentiation when we had the mix between the X and Y's and couldn't solve for just one variable. So implicit differentiation. Inverse functions, those derivatives, 1 over f prime evaluated at f inverse of x, inverse functions. And lastly, we had the trig inverse one, where those end up being a little bit trig inverse. Uh, trig inverse. What I was going to say, are those tended to be a little bit easier. That you know, remember uh, inverse tangent was u prime over one plus u squared, ones like that. So those were more just rule based and very easy to follow. So there's not a lot of new stuff. Well, there is really no new stuff in this lesson. It is a ton of review. I've got a few to run through with you, and then you can work on, I believe there's a worksheet for you, yep, worksheet number seven. So let's just look through number one. I would use the product rule on number one. Pause the video. See if you can come up with the answer using product rule. So there's my answer to number one, product rule straight up. Just had to remember the rule for natural log. I got an answer of E. Number two, F and G are functions such that F of G of X, composite function, equals X for all X in their domain. And if F of A equals B and F prime of A equals C, then which of the following are true or is true? Notice we've got A's and B's kind of going on there. Well, let's go through this one. So. First thing I noticed when I read it, that is a composite function. That's going to be an f prime g of x times g prime of x um, rule. And then the derivative of x on the right side is going to be easy. That's going to be a 1. It looks like they want us to evaluate at a, so we're going to evaluate our derivative at a. Pause the video and then come back and compare your answers. Well, surprise. When I started working on this one, I noticed there was a bit of a problem. And I did my composite function, right? 
and I did the derivative on the right side, which gave me 1. And then I got to a g of a, and there is no, no value for that. And so then I had to start rethinking that this is probably not the approach on that. So another thought hit my, my brain. What is f of g of x equals x in, in uh, internal meaning? It shows that g and f of x have a relationship where they're inverse functions. So knowing that, that I've got that going on, take and approach it from an inverse perspective. Still stuck? Well, let's walk through it together. All right, so this tells me I have inverse functions. For f of a, that's an a, b combination. For g function, g would be g of b equals a then. So that would be a b comma a ordered pair, right, if they're inverse functions. Let's, uh, and then they give me f prime of a. If they give me f prime, then I'm probably finding g prime. So let's do g prime. They give me of a, so I'm going to start with b for my g prime. That's like saying f inverse of b derivative. Uh, yeah. And that's equivalent to 1 over, remember this reciprocal relationship, f prime of g or f inverse. Let's write in f inverse. f inverse of b. Well, f inverse of b gets me a. And that'd be 1 over f prime of a was c. I'm going to get 1 over c, and it started out with g prime of b. I'm getting c on that one. That was tough. All right, number three, find the equation of the tangent line through 2, negative 1. Implicit differentiation, I see I've got x and y's intermixed. Hit pause, go for it. Do your implicit differentiation, evaluating it at 2, 1. All right, hopefully you got your slope, um, dy, dx. So implicit, I started by taking derivative, and that gave me 18x plus 32y, dy, dx. Don't forget that part, equals 0. I wanted to solve for dy, dx, so I just worked algebraically through it, moved the 18x over to the other side, solved for dy, dx, simplified it. Then I went and evaluated at 2, negative 1, which gave me a positive 9, 8 slope. And now I'm ready for my tangent line equation, which would be y minus uh, negative 1, so y plus 1, equals 9 eighths x minus 2. There is one form of the linear equation. And I'm looking down at all their answers. I don't see any fractions, and I see everything move to the side where uh, x is listed first, either as a positive or a negative. So i got to be kind of flexible in my thinking here. I'm going to multiply everything through by 8 so I can get rid of the denominator. So that's going to mean I'm going to come through with 8 here and 8 on that side. That will give me 8y plus 8 equals 8 over 8 cancels. Distributing the 9, I get 9x minus 18. Bring everything to one side. I'm going to get negative 9x plus x, uh, 8y. 18 added would give me a 26 equals 0. That's a potential answer. Oh, uh, they got negative 26. Should I have had negative 26? I don't believe so. So what if I switched my signs, multiplied both sides by a negative? I could have an alternate answer looking like this. Um, oops, it's not C. It is, it is B. Know what I had before? Yep, that's the answer I got before. Okay. What is the slope of the line tangent to the curve arctan? 2x at the point x equals 1 half. Pause the video, take the derivative. Hopefully you remember the pattern for arctan. U prime over what? 
Hopefully you had success on this one. This wasn't too bad. Um, here's my pattern for arc tan, isn't it? U prime over 1 plus u squared. So I did my derivative. The derivative of 2x gave me 2. I had to square it. That gave me a 4x squared. Plugged in the 1 half value. That made a quarter. A quarter times 4 gave me 1. 2 over 2 equals 1. C is our answer. Number 5 is going to be quotient rule. See if you can work number 5 out. The answer, ooh, I had negative 6x squared over 3x squared minus x. I'm not sure I'm seeing that. I'm going to work it out too. Okay, so um, I've laid out my steps. Lots of things canceled in that numerator. I came down with negative 6x squared over 3x squared minus x quantity squared. What I noticed in my denominator, because none of those answers are present, is that there is an x in common to both of those. So I factored that forward, GCF'd it. It still remains in the squaring um, brackets. So I get negative 6x squared. This x will take on the squaring, so I'll get x squared there. And I still will have this 3x minus, oh, this should be a 1, 3x minus 1 quantity squared. The x squared and x squared cancel. Now, is there an answer of negative 6 over 3? Yeah, C. That was tricky. Just a little bit more algebra to get a simplified answer. Six, I'm going to have you skip. Um, seven, if you want to work through it. Seven, I have an answer of two. Number eight is going to be product rule. Oh, it's got some fun functions there, right? What is the pattern for five raised to the two x? Well, it's, oh, it's natural log of a times a to the u times chain rule u prime. What's the derivative of a natural log of u? It's 1 over u times u prime. And then you've got to work through product rule, f prime g plus g prime f. For 8, the answer does turn out to be a. For 9, it is also a. That is one of those inverse problems. And number 10, the answer is c. Um, Oh, that one we just need to know the derivative of that. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this one quick. Derivative of u is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared plus 2. And the derivative of square root x is 1 over 2 square root x. I know that one by heart. That cancels. And I think we got our answer. It's c. That was a nice one. All right. The only other one, I think maybe I should do this one with you. The, the inverse one. So hit pause and see if you can do it on your own, and then I'm going to walk through it. All right. Um, I've laid out quite a bit of work here, so let's walk through it. They want us to find the value of g prime of 0. And I know that inverse uh, derivatives go like g prime of x. Well, that was related to f. It was f's inverse. So f prime of f prime of f inverse of x derivative is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. So if I put my 0 in place, I'm going to have g prime of 0 equals 1 over f prime or f inverse of 0 derivative. And that's going to be a 1 over f prime of f inverse of 0. f inverse of 0 becomes an f prime of 2 because of that statement there, f of 2 equals 0. And I need to read it backwards since I'm working in inverse state. So if I put in 2, I get out 0. Um, so put in 0, I get out 2 for the original function. That means I need to evaluate the derivative at 2. And there is no f prime of 2 information given. So I have to go and develop my own derivative. And the derivative of f prime was easy. It was 3x squared minus 2. Evaluate it at 2 so we can get this. And I got 10, so I have 1 over 10. Uh, answer was A.
All right, that leaves you with um, another worksheet. It has some graphs and charts and all kinds of fun stuff. So there you go. Oh, just notice this. They ask you for what your procedure is going to be. And by that, they're meaning, okay, how are you going to take the derivative of m there? I would use quotient rule. So this is all it's asking you to identify is what ru overarching rule will you use? Sometimes you might even have to use a little chain rule on this. This one looks like chain rule to me. If you want to abbreviate a little, please feel free to do that just so you know what you're using. Okay, bye-bye.